It's another day where I've been on the road too long. It's raining well after dark and I cannot find Little River State Park in Vermont. GPS led me down a dirt road and there was no signage several miles in so I turned around and headed back. It's 7 a.m. Wilderness Edge Campground, Millinocket, Maine. I should have been in the campsite one above where I am now. It's a much flatter site. Putting the mini mate down there was a little tough last night. It's going to be a little tough hauling it out, but that's okay. That's going to be after coffee and breakfast, and then we're going to tackle this road and see if it is as bad today as it felt last night coming in. But coffee first. Two cups of coffee, bacon, egg, and a bagel, and I get packed up and ready to go. It's about nine o'clock. And instead of just trying to get right out on that road, ah, heck, I'm just gonna go take the long way around. A little bit easier taking the corner by going through the, the pull through site across the road from me. It was pretty loose coming up yesterday and stalled the bike a number of times on the way up. Most of this gravel road is not bad. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's a gravel road and I'm okay with that. It's just down near the bottom where they had some washouts in the last couple of weeks. It was just really, really loose yesterday because it was mostly filled in with sand. So we're taking it slow, but steady. This is all going downhill. So the big thing is making sure you've still got some traction. I'm not gonna apply any brakes. I'm not gonna try to stop. Just keep it going at a nice, slow, even pace. The ST is not a really good off-road bike, <laughs> at least it's not an adventure bike. And hauling the trailer, it's, it's, uh, yeah, I know it going down the hill. But as I said, now, the biggest thing is making sure I don't try to stop, get over the, the worst bumps through the sand, and then I'm fine. No, good people here, and uh, they tell me that if, if I can come back on my return trip, they'll put me up over on the trailer side, where I actually stayed last uh, last May, and then uh, be a little bit easier. The road's a little bit better, and also there's Wi-Fi over there at the the washroom. I must admit though, at least I had uh, good cell service this time. Last time I was here, I don't think I had cell service. So now we're out and time to get on the road for the day. I've got a long day planned. So yesterday, I ended up doing just shy of 700 kilometers, including my trip out to find brake pads. And I was on the road for nine hours total, which is a fairly long day, but I'm planning another long day today. I'm going to try to get to Meadowland uh, Park down near Lake Placid. That's going to be another nine hour 
riding day, let alone gas and, uh, and lunch stop. First things first is we're trying to stay off the interstate. So instead of going out on to I-95, we're heading down through Highway 11, 150, and meet up with Highway 2 at Skowhegan. This is going to take me through some farm country, some forest country, and certainly some... Uh, some areas I have not been before. I've been chatting online with another uh, Minimate owner, Brian from New Hampshire, and we've made arrangements to uh, meet in Gorham for lunch. Google tells me that's about four hours away. Well, that's if there's no construction and really going through this many small towns and some larger ones it's much slower going than i thought i had optimistically told brian i'd be there about one o'clock and well i think i was an hour and a half to two hours later of course my body is on newfoundland time the bikes showing Newfoundland time. My GPS, I did switch it to Nova Scotia time to the half hour difference. And here, I'm actually another hour difference. So my phone's showing one time, the bike is showing another, and the GPS still another again. I always stick to the speed limit in town. On the rest of the highway, even with the trailer, I'm going about 10% over the speed limit most of the time. But yeah, I can get past by Harleys. Get a little bit of hard rain, then it slacks off. Looks like it's going to clear, then get a little more rain again. And this is a longer ride than I actually was expecting this morning. Don't know what threw me off. I did a lot of paper and spreadsheet planning for this trip. But I think I've spent too much time looking at the paper. Anyway, just answering a text message from Ryan and telling him I'm still about a half an hour away. Yeah, I think I was letting the the paper numbers uh, fool me a bit, because paper is not reality. And of course, the other thing that happens is on the last stretch going into Gorham, I have a few camera batteries die and nothing's running when another bike heads past me going in the opposite direction it's pulling a, a what looks like a new white mini mate the rider gives me a good wave I slow down puts his brake lights on but then keeps going and it turns out that it's Craig another mini mate mo owner who had hoped to have lunch with me, but he uh, he just couldn't wait with me running so far behind schedule. So what I thought was going to be a four-hour run ends up being over six and a half hours. Um, still not quite sure why it was so slow, because I really wasn't that slow when I was riding. And I have a little trouble with... Uh, cameras turning them on and off 
So I think I got just only got a couple little glimpses of, of Brian, but we had a really good lunch. And it was it was a really good to sit down with another Mini Maid owner and just talk about things. And riding in general, of course. But we sat there for too long. But I'm already reassessing my day. It's like, oh, there's no way I'm going to get all the way to to the Lake Placid area. Just no way. I'm topped up and ready for another three hours of riding. Now usually when I'm riding with someone else, I'll try to get them out in front so I can video them. Uh, somehow, Brian got himself behind me and that was that. So, leaving Gorham. Sunny, it's great, but it's about 5 o'clock in the afternoon, so it's like... Uh, Man, I'm really losing this day. Maybe I've just been too overly optimistic in my uh, in my planning. Uh, we're just passing this stretch where those seven motorcyclists got killed this spring. Always makes you think. Makes you think. Sun's starting to get low, and it's bright. And not that further down the road, it's time for, for Brian to pull off and head his own way back. He's going to have a, a long enough ride going home and I've got to decide where I'm going for the night. Gorham to Meadowbrook Campground, when it, my, my original plans for tonight. Well, that's five hours. That's without gas stops and uh, a meal or coffee. That's unrealistic for me tonight. I just am not going to do that. But my dilemma is I need to be further along. I need to be, I need to be within a full day's ride of Arrowhead Provincial Park near Huntsville, Ontario tomorrow night. Oh, well, at least it's sunny right now and temperature's okay. I am making some time, but I gotta decide where I am going to end up tonight. The last time I passed here was the end of October last year. And it was in snow, which is appropriate because it is Santa's Village, near Jefferson, New Hampshire. At least I've got no snow this trip. But we are starting to see a little bit of uh, rain and moisture again. It's getting wetter and it's getting darker. A great combination on the bike. I'm no longer packing a rain suit because with the Tormaster Transition 4 jacket and pants, I find that my water protection is pretty darn good. So I've decided I'm gonna head for Little River State Park in Vermont. Stop for one last gas stop, go in for a small coffee, and the, the clerk says, oh, coffee's on the house. Looks like you need it. <laughs> she was right. So we've got the state park in the GPS. And we're, we're ready to go. It looks like I've got about another hour of riding tonight before I get there. At least, I think that's all I've got left in riding tonight.
my old rule of thumb was 10 hours maximum from getting on the bike to getting off the bike for the night. Now that's fine during the summer, but I find this last couple of years I've been doing an awful lot of traveling in spring and in, uh, in fall when the days are a lot shorter. I'm finding out that in Vermont, they're doing an awful lot of road construction at night. Long delays. So it's really eating up my, my time and I've totally lost any chance of setting up the tent with some semblance of daylight. I am starting to think that I have to totally rethink my travel planning. I'm retired. I don't have to, to fit as much time or as many kilometers into a short time. I'm ending up traveling after dark. I don't like that. It takes away a lot of my enjoyment as far as camping goes. And I've got to reset my mind. I've got to refigure this whole travel thing. Now I am under a bit of a time constraint getting to Huntsville, but that also was self-inflicted. Lots and lots of work going on on the highway. GPS leads me through Waterbury and gets me out to the park entrance. But then there's no signage. And I travel down a dirt road about five, six kilometers. And I cannot find the campgrounds. So I turn around, head back to the highway, look for another state park. There's one near Stowe, so that's where I'm heading. Though I have to admit, it's now 9.30 at night, and I don't want to set up the tent in the dark and the damp. So I end up staying in a motel. Next day, I have to get to Huntsville. And oh yeah, my GPS, it works really well. See this bridge? This is my third time crossing over it. But that's tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next video.